Hey everyone, welcome back to Satisfactory News. Of the many things that you need to manage in Satisfactory, power is one of the most critical. Without it, your factory just doesn't run. But getting the math right and understanding the mechanics of power may be confusing. This video is going to be all about how the game mechanic for power works, how to understand the power you have available, and how to create a well-functioning power grid. If you end up finding this video helpful, don't forget to absolutely obliterate that like button. And let's get into it. What is power? Buildings in Satisfactory run on power, and it's the most important resource in the whole game. Power is generated by specific buildings and is transferred most commonly through power lines and power poles, but also through train stations and railways. Power is measured in MW, or megawatts. But since there are no other power units in the game, MW might as well stand for Melon Wiggles. Don't get hung up on the units, because they don't really matter. Just focus on the numbers. Power is mostly a simple concept. Unlike items on a belt, power transmission happens instantly. There is no voltage or resistance like in real-world power systems, and you only need to worry about the amount of power you have available. Each production machine has a set amount of power that it needs per minute, which can fluctuate downward if it doesn't have all of the materials it needs. How power works. In Update 4, power producing machines were changed, so they produce a steady supply of power and work the same as any other production machine. The exception is geothermal generators and biomass burners, but common large-scale power producers, such as coal generators and nuclear power plants, now produce a predictable amount of power, regardless of what the factory is demanding. This makes math a lot easier than it used to be, but it also means that you'll need more resources than you may have in the past. Reading the power graph. When you interact with a power pole, you can see four different statistics. There are currently two lines, capacity and production, which are the same thing. Capacity is the maximum load that your power grid can support, while production is the amount of energy being generated for the grid. Since power is now steady for most generators, capacity and production will always be equal. Consumption is the energy currently being consumed by your factory. Maximum consumption is how much power your factory would draw if every machine connected to the grid was running at once at its set clock speed. The reason consumption might be lower than your maximum consumption is if you have idle machines. Unless your factory is perfectly optimized so that every machine is always running, these lines should be different. Power trips. If you have too much production happening, or if your power production gets interrupted, your entire power system will trip due to the factory demanding more power than can be provided. Machines don't compensate for a lower amount of power, they just always demand the amount of power they need to make the number of items you've told it to. You'll know a power trip when it happens, as the ominous sound effect can be heard no matter where you are in the world. A power trip is a scary thing, because unless you turn off all of your production machines, you might have a hard time booting the system back up. With the new power switches from Update 4, you can segment off specific factories and turn them off while starting up your power generators again. We'll talk more about that in the power switch later on in the video. If you do have a power trip, you can get it running again by interacting with a power pole, which is the E key by default, and pulling down the lever. Hostile creatures are scared away by active machines, so a power trip that lasts too long can cause them to respawn in an area where they've stopped spawning. Power Grid A power grid refers to your network of power. In most cases, every single one of your buildings will be connected to the same power grid. This will combine all of your power generating machines into the same maximum capacity, and it will combine all of your power consuming machines into a maximum power draw. If possible, try to connect all of your buildings with power lines and power poles. Connect far-off factories with railways which carry power between train stations. You can have one central power line coming out of your power generators and start splitting off of this line to power each of the sections of your factory. Overclocking Overclocking machines is done with power shards, which can be created from power slugs found across the world. Overclocking a machine that consumes power is always going to be less energy efficient than just building more machines. For example, the constructor at 100% speed consumes just 4 megawatts but doubling that to 200% clock speed consumes 12.13 megawatts. That's over triple the power for only double the production speed. Underclocking a factory actually saves power in the same way, yet will result in a larger footprint for your factory, because you'll need more machines. However, there is no downside to overclocking power generating machines. These scale in a linear way, but of course this also means you can just make more power generators instead if you want to save on power shards. Power Management with Update 4, we gained access to some new power management tools that should smooth out the experience a bit. First is the power switch. 
These are devices that can bridge the gap between two power poles, and they let you easily turn on and off that connection. So for example, if your power generators have a power switch between them and the rest of your factory, you can turn off that switch during a power outage, thus turning off your factory while letting your power generators run and fill back up with materials. The second new power item is batteries. Batteries can help to supplement a power grid while you're expanding your factory. When batteries are empty, they get filled with excess power from your grid that your machines aren't using. When your factory is demanding more power than it's receiving from your power generators, it can draw from the batteries until they run out. This helps create a buffer while you're expanding your factory and can prevent a power outage. It's useful to have these around just in case, especially if you're rapidly expanding production without expanding power generation. Power Generators When you first get started in Satisfactory, biomass burners will be the only option available to you. As you progress, you'll unlock coal generators. Coal generators will probably power you through the early to mid game pretty nicely. Fuel generators can come into play after you get oil production up and running and will yield a lot more power at the price of having to convert oil into fuel through its own factory. In the late game, you'll get nuclear power, which requires a lot of setup but a ton of power output. Nuclear power plants produce 2500 megawatts per generator, as compared to a single coal generator which only produces 75 megawatts. Placing power generators is also a challenge. Coal generators and nuclear power plants should be placed near a large water source since both require a lot of water. It's easier to bring in solid materials from elsewhere than it is to pipe in water deep inland. Fuel generators should be placed near a large oil deposit if possible for the same reasons. The Optimal Coal Power Setup In an article we wrote during Update 3, we went into detail about how to set up an ideal coal power plant. The rules haven't changed because we created this optimally, but it's more critical now than ever to get it perfect. We figured this would be a great real-world example of how to use the current power rules in Satisfactory. So, the lowest common denominator between coal generators and water extractors is that three water extractors can support exactly eight coal generators, but you will need to use a Mark II pipe or some fancy liquid balancing with Mark I pipes, which is what we're going to cover now. Assuming you have Mark II pipes available, simply hook up those three water extractors to eight coal generators and make sure everything is operating at 100% then you'll have a perfect system. But if you only have Mark I pipes, you'll have to do some balancing. But it's pretty simple. Connect two of the extractors to the entire setup of eight coal generators. Then connect the third extractor at the fourth coal generator. This works because the first three machines will be using a total of 135 water, leaving 105 for the rest of the system. This 105 will combine at the fourth machine with 120 from the other extractor, for a total of 225 water. The Mark I pipe never needs to transport more than 300 water at once, resulting in a perfectly balanced system. When it comes to coal, those 8 generators require 120 coal per minute. You can extract this from a pure node with a Mark I miner, or a normal node with a Mark II miner to get exact numbers, but of course you can also extract up to 720 coal from an overclocked node, which will support 6 of these coal generator setups. This means that one fully utilized node can support 48 coal generators, which will produce 3600 megawatts of power. Since this is a guide about power, it's important to recognize that 3600 megawatts isn't the whole story. It takes power to make power. It'll take 57.4 megawatts to mine 720 coal if you're using a Mark III miner on a pier node. The 60 water extractors required will consume 360 megawatts. This means that almost 420 megawatts of that 3600 is devoted to powering the system, not including any pumps that you need to lift the water. So by the end of it, you'll be left with 3180 megawatts. It's up to you whether you play the game this way or not. In general, you're going to always need more power, so you should build these systems as efficiently as possible and build as many as you're reasonably able to. Power in Satisfactory isn't really too challenging, especially now that your power generators produce as much power as they can at all times. No more questions about how efficiently your power is running, because you'll always know. Let us know in the comments if you have any more questions about power, and if you don't have any questions, brag about how much power you're generating in your game. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next Satisfactory News video.